Democrat Party, ladies and gentlemen, in many ways was a terrorist party. People think the Democrat Party began 50 years ago. It didn't begin 50 years ago. When we talk about Democrat history, there's reference to the fact that the Democrats created the Federal Reserve Board, passed labor and child welfare laws, created Social Security with Wilson's New Freedom and FDR's New Deal. There's no mention that these programs were created as the result of an agreement to ignore segregation and the lynching of blacks. Neither is there a reference to the thousands of local officials, state legislatures, state governors, U.S. congressmen and senators who were elected as supporters of slavery and then segregation between 1800 and 1965. Nor is there reference to the deal with the devil that left segregation and lynching as a way of life in return for the election and support of three post-Civil War Democrat presidents, Grover Cleveland, Woodrow Wilson, and Franklin Roosevelt. Now these are the facts. There's no reference that the three-fourths of the opposition to the 1964 Civil Rights Bill in the U.S. House came from Democrats. Three-fourths. Or that 80% of the no votes in the Senate came from Democrats. Certainly there's no reference to the fact that the opposition induced future Democrat Senate leader Robert Byrd of West Virginia not just a former Klansman, he formed his own local Klan in West Virginia, which had been part of the Union, not the Confederacy. And Tennessee Senator Albert Gore Sr., father of the future Vice President. And there's no reference in Democrat history to the fact that Birmingham, Alabama, Public Safety Commissioner Bull Connor, who infamously unleashed dogs and fire hoses on civil rights protesters, was in fact, yes indeed, a member of both the Democratic National Committee and the Ku Klux Klan. It's the Democrats that have to clean up the Democrats, isn't it? The Republicans never did any of this. Official Republicans never did any of this. Republican senators never did any of this. Republican governors never did any of this. Republican mayors never did any of this. And Republicans have to answer for the Confederate flag. Democrats have to answer for the Democrat Party, as far as I'm concerned. But I've got more. Oh, I've been digging. President Lyndon Baines Johnson, off the thought of as the great modern eman emancipator. Liberals will praise this guy left and right. He pushed the 64 Civil Rights Act. He pushed the 64... This man was a racist through and through. That's right, I said it. I want you to listen to this 1964 phone call. It's Johnson speaking. 1964, he's in the White House, he's on a White House phone, it's taped as they used to do in those days. I found it on YouTube. And I want you to listen carefully. This man came out of Texas, and he has to find ways to show that, you know, poll taxes and literacy texts and so forth and so on are discriminatory. He, and, he's, and he's lamenting this, because he says, in fact, the ends, I won't use it like Obama does, the ends are voting in bigger numbers than the whites. So how can I prove it's discriminatory, he says. I want you to listen to this. Now, Rich, when you play it, kick up the volume. And, folks, if you want to hear it, you need to kick up the volume, too. I'm playing it, and hopefully the backbenchers will pick up on it. Cut one, go. Say what? You can't have a poll tax. They can say you can't have a gas tax or a cigarette tax or anything else. The federal government's telling the states that... Uh, pretty tough what, what their business is. Now, you can say that they can't discriminate, but I've got to prove that it discriminates. Now, I can't prove it in Texas. There are more n****s voting there than there are white folks. Now, more... Well, let's stop. There's more enters voting there than the white folks. There's more enters voting there than the white folks. I can't prove that these Jim Crow laws are preventing the enters from voting, that it discriminates, but they want me to show it because there's more enters voting than the white folks. So now we have two presidents who've used the N-word. Lyndon Johnson and Barack Obama. And they're both a disgrace. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what your race is. It's amazing. You don't have to ban words. Just have some self-control. And don't use certain words. So start from the top, and we'll play it straight through. Cut one. Lyndon Johnson, 1964, in the White House. Go. Say what? You can't have a poll tax. They can say you can't have a gas tax or a cigarette tax or anything else. Well, let's stop Better. there. Let me, let me, pardon me. So he's comparing a poll tax to a cigarette tax or a gas. He's saying, you know, the feds, now he's working for the Kennedys. He's saying, you know, the feds, you know, if they say you can't have a poll tax, I guess they can say you can't have a cigarette tax or, 
or a gas tax. What the hell is that all about? I mean, the inners are voting more than the whites. It's the problem here. All right, start from the top. Go. Say, well, you can't have a poll tax. They can say you can't have a gas tax or a cigarette tax or anything else. The federal government's telling the states that uh, uh, pretty tough what, what their business is. Now, you can say that they can't discriminate, but I've got to prove that it discriminates. Now, I can't prove it in Texas. They're more niggas voting there than they are white folks. They're oh, more wow. buying poll taxes than they are white folks. Higher percentage of them. And I can't show that, uh, that the literacy test is, is, is discriminated against because they haven't got any. Uh, okay, I can't show that it's a problem because there's no discrimination, really. The, the enters are voting more than the white folks. But then there's Woodrow Wilson, turn of the last century. The first great progressive. Now, we have buildings named after Woodrow Wilson. We have institutes named after Woodrow Wilson. We've got entire departments and Ivy Lake schools named after Woodrow Wilson. The Woodrow Wilson this and the Wilson Boulevard and Woodrow, Woodrow, Woodrow. What a great man he was. Oh, the League of Nations. Oh, you know, uh, so forth and so on. Woodrow Wilson was a disgusting racist. Anybody takes the time to look at it, he was a disgusting racist. Scholar after scholar after scholar has written about this. A couple of years back, a professor at Boston University pointed this out, William Kalor. Among other things, he wrote, born in Virginia and raised in Georgia and South Carolina. By the way, is this boring everybody? I mean, I can talk about meatballs. Or I can go on and on about what's the next statue we need to ban and uh, who's good and who's bad. No, no. This is a history lesson. It's history time, baby. Real history. Born in Virginia and raised in Georgia and South Carolina, Woodrow Wilson was a loyal son of the Old South who regretted the outcome of the Civil War. He used his high office to reverse some of its consequences. When he entered the White House a hundred years ago, Washington was rigidly a segregation town, except for the federal government, except for federal agencies. They had been integrated during the post-war Reconstruction period enabling African Americans to obtain federal jobs and work side by side with whites in government agencies. Well, Wilson couldn't have that, see? Wilson promptly authorized members of his cabinet to reverse this long-standing policy of racial integration in the federal civil service. So what the Republicans had done, their first big-time progressive Democrat undid. Cabinet heads, such as his son-in-law, Secretary of the Treasury William McAdoo of Tennessee, resegregated facilities such as restrooms and cafeterias in these federal buildings in some federal offices screens were required to be set up to separate white and black workers african americans found it difficult to secure a high level civil service positions which some had held under previous republican administrations why won't the media report any of this well we know why a delegation of black professionals led by monroe trotter a phi beta kappa graduate of harvard and a Boston newspaper editor appeared at the White House to protest these new policies. But Woodrow Wilson treated them rudely and declared that, quote, segregation is not a humiliation but a benefit and ought to be so regarded by you gentlemen, unquote. The novel The Klansman by Thomas Dixon, a longtime political supporter, friend, and former classmate of Wilson's at Johns Hopkins University, was published in 1905. A decade later, with Woodrow Wilson in the White House, cinematographer D.W. Griffith produced a motion picture version of that book titled Birth of a Nation, with quotations from Wilson's scholarly writings in its subtitles. The silent film denounced the Reconstruction period in the South when blacks briefly held elective office in several states. It hailed the rise of the Ku Klux Klan as a sign of Southern white society's recovery, from the humiliation and suffering to which the federal government and the northern carpetbaggers, quote-unquote, had subjected it after the defeat in Civil War. The film depicted African Americans, mostly played by white actors in blackface, as uncouth, uncivilized, and rabble. The Democrat Party celebrates Woodrow Wilson. Celebrates him. Just as they celebrated Robert Byrd and made a majority leader in the United States Senate. Now, while the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People publicly denounced the movie's blatant appeals to racial prejudice, Woodrow Wilson organized a private screening of his friend's film in the White House for members of his cabinet and their families. Quote, it is like writing history with lightning, Wilson observed. My only regret 
is that it is all so terribly true. So are we going to take down those signs, those Woodrow Wilson schools? Are we going to change their names? I ask all my northern friends, our friends in New England, our friends in the northern states, our friends in the Atlantic region states, the Woodrow Wilson Institute, aren't you ashamed? Well, you might as well hang the Confederate flag on that building. Pathetic. Disgusting. There's tons more on this man who was pathetic and disgusting. I'm not done.